Hi guys, Dane here, and also Biggie. Biggie is also here, look. Hey mate, you having a nice sleep? Good boy. So as you probably guessed from the title, today is part number three of my bookshelf tour. This is the Charles Bukowski edition, basically, because this shelf is pretty much mostly Bukowski. You can see over there where I've taken the uh, books down. Shoot, let's just get straight into it. We ended the last tour with Terry Brooks, which means today we are moving on to Dan Brown, of course. So this is Angels and Demons, which is the first Robert Langdon book. We also have, uh, I've got the Da Vinci Code here, which is book number two. And then The Lost Symbol, which is book number three. And there's at least one more new one out. Possibly two more new ones. But I don't think I have, uh, well I have one of them actually. I have, I can't remember what it's called, but I have one of them that I haven't read yet anyway. I also have here, Digital Fortress and Deception Point, which are both standalones. And I believe Digital Fortress was his first because somebody, I think it was World of Sleuths, recently uh, recently read this one. And yeah, they're fine. I mean, it's Dan Brown. So you kind of know. Ed, all of the criticism that gets leveled at, leveled at Dan Brown is kind of fair criticism. But he can still write a decent enough story, you know. So I've, I've read these in my time. And I will continue to read his books when I get a chance. Okay, then here we have Real Monsters, Liam Brown. This is an uncorrective proof. It said, uh, Real Monsters is the story of two young lovers with a war wedge between them, a surreal and ferociously recognisable allegory for our war-torn times. And I do remember quite enjoying this, actually. This is by Legend Press as well, and Legend Press do do some pretty decent books. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wouldn't recommend it above any other book in particular, but if, if it sounds like your kind of thing, definitely get it. Then we have A Cabin in the Mountains by Paul Brown, and this is another of the Reality Street poetry books that I mentioned in a previous video. So basically, uh, Reality Street do a supporter scheme, so you can see in here. Reality Street supporters who've supported this book, I am in there somewhere. Yeah, you pay a certain amount and then you get some free books and it was fine. They're quite experimental with the kind of poetry they go for, which is really why I got their books, just to see what was new in the field of poetry. Okay, then we have Bill Bryson, Notes from a Small Island, and this is fantastic. So Bryson is an American who moved to the United Kingdom, and this is basically his kind of his book about about the UK and life in the UK, but through the eyes of an American. And it was very, very funny, just highly enjoyable. It kind of in itself almost launched the genre of kind of comedic travel writing, I would say. And it was so good that I've decided I'm going to try and read the rest of Bill Bryson's books as well. So I've started collecting them all, even though this is the only one I've read so far. Then we have Magnesium by Ray Buckley, and this is a poetry collection. Yeah, he, he this was one that was sent to me. And um, yeah, it's just a little poetry collection. This is actually a first edition, number 160 of 200. He's an American author from the Pacific Northwest. He's an actor and cinematographer. Believe it or not, the rest of this video is Charles Bukowski, and it's not even my full Charles Bukowski collection because we'll continue it onto the next shelf. And actually, because, basically, because a lot of these are just short story collections or poetry collections, it's hard to really talk about them, so I'm going to do my best and, I guess, say what I can about each of these, but equally, once you've read 20 of his poetry collections, they all start to blur together, you know. We'll start off with, this is the movie Barfly, and this is the script for the movie that Bukowski wrote, uh, starring, uh, who was it starring again, Mickey Rourke and Faye Dunaway, and um, I mean it's not a particularly great movie, but I'm a pretty big Bukowski fan, so I just wanted to get this so that I had it, so it's nice to have screenplays as part of your collection. Okay, then we have Betting on the Muse, Poems and Stories, so this is a collection of both poetry and fiction, although his fiction is very autobiographical as well. And um, you don't get many kind of ones that do select both his poems and stories. It's quite often one or the other. So, for example, this here, this is Bone Palace Ballet, New Poems. Again, I, can't, I really cannot tell you much about any of these books. I was thinking about reading you a poem from each of them as I go through, but I realised there were just too many. This is Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame, selected poems 1955 to 1973. And I actually saw uh, Jay Shea mention this on his channel the other day, so 
He's read, I think he's read one of Bukowski's collections before and he just happened to see this, so he picked this up as his, his second one. And yeah, why not? The thing with Bukowski's poetry as well, I would, if I was you and, and you want to check out some of his work, literally just choose one that has a title that you like the sound of and you're probably not going to be disappointed. This is Come On In, New Poems. Uh, it says there on the front, The Best Poet in America. I actually don't like this one as much because, th well, this is one of the Canongate collections and these other ones, all of these ones so far, these have all been published by Echo and the Echo ones are just really, really beautiful and this Canongate one is all right, but I mean, it has a glossy cover for a start and I like the other ones with their with their matte covers. I mean, look at this one again. So this is this has got to be Echo, surely. Oh no, this is Black Sparrow Press. This is dangling in the Torn of Forsha and you can actually see I don't uh, hopefully the camera picks it up can you see the kind of lines on this it's actually a three-dimensional paper like if you rub your hand over it you get this oh it feels good okay then we have factotum and factotum is it's one of the Henry Chinaski novels I'm not sure which order they come in if you uh, if you check Matt here on booktube from paperback junkie he, he knows a lot about Bukowski as well so Okay, so it, it does actually say here, so this follows Post Office, which is uh, his first novel. And so this is, uh, buh, buh, buh. well, I'll read you the blurb here. Henry Chinaski, which is Bukowski's alter ego for himself, an outcast, a loner and a drunk, drifts around America from one dead-end job to another, from one woman to another, and from one bottle to the next. Uncompromising, gritty, hilarious and confessional in turn, his downward spiral is peppered with black humour. And again, what's, what's cool about Bukowski is that his fiction kind of adds to his poetry. You get to know him more through his fiction or through his semi-autobiographical stuff, I guess. And you get to know him more through that, and then it makes you understand and appreciate his poetry more. And I think that's, that's pretty cool how it works out like that. Okay, then we have Ham on Rye, and this basically follows his childhood. It says here, Legendary Barfly, Charles Bukowski's fourth novel, first published in 1982, is probably the most autobiographical and moving of all his books, dealing in particular with his difficult relationship with his father and his early childhood in LA. And um, this has got like, it's the backdrop against the depression stuff. He also has really bad acne at the time as well. And even though this one is published by Canongate, this was probably my favorite Bukowski uh, novel. I think I also read them out of order, so don't worry about reading them out of order. If you want to, if one of them sounds, you know, one of the novels sounds like it's your kind of thing, then definitely check it out. Especially if you're not a reader of poetry, don't don't think that you can't get into him because you're not into poetry. For a start, his poetry is nothing like the poetry you probably read elsewhere. Anyway, this is Hollywood by Charles Bukowski. It says on the back here, never before published in the UK. There are many scandalous books about life in Hollywood, but none as poetic and dangerous as this, a fictional chronicle of Bukowski's experiences writing the screenplay for Barfly. Henry Chinaski has a penchant for booze, women and horse racing. On his precarious journey from poet to screenwriter, he encounters a host of well-known stars and lays bare the absurdity and egotism of the film industry. With unmatchable Bukowski verve, Hollywood is deadpan, touching and hilarious. And I actually read this one recently as well. It's in one of my wrap-ups. I can't remember which one. But uh, I gave it a 5 out of 5. I loved it. But again, I love Bukowski, so I don't know how much that says to you. But And again, this chronicles the experience of making this movie, which is pretty cool. Then we have Hot Water Music, which is, I believe, more poetry and prose. No, it's all, pro all prose, this. So uh, this is another Echo collection. So this is a collection of all of his short stories. Hot Water Music. I say all of his short stories. It's not all of them. It's some of them. We have Love is a Dog from Hell. And this is Poetry. Again, again another beautiful Echo collection here. We have Mockingbird Wish Me Luck. And this is another Echo collection. Again, a bunch of poetry. They're just so aesthetically pleasing, these things. I do feel bad that I can't tell you more about these individual books because some people have, have, have commented on the previous videos, you know, saying really nice things about how I have like stories behind most of these books and when it gets to an author like Bukowski where I have 40 books or whatever, there's only so many stories, you know. I said this is a Notes of a Dirty Old Man, I believe this was uh, 
something that Becca got me, and it says here, This collection of Bukowski's columns for an underground LA newspaper epitomises his style of gritty realism. Writing as himself, or his alter ego, Henry Chinaski, Bukowski delves into America's lowlife to eulogise his life's losers and anti-heroes. Packed with violence, women, gambling and booze, Bukowski's semi-autobiographical stories veer between hilarity and despair as he extols the inherent beauty and futility of life. If that blurb hasn't convinced you you need to read him, nothing will. Okay, these three are kind of some more recent ones that are actually, again, these are all Canongate collections, and they put, bring together stuff from letters and poems and stories and all sorts on a, on a sim simple topic. So we have Bukowski on cats, on love, and on writing. And actually, all three of these are fantastic. If you're a writer, I heartily recommend on writing. If you have a cat, I heartily recommend if, that you get on cats. Yeah, I mean, what's more to say? I, I got these real, really recently, and even though... I, oh, actually, there is a problem there. My copy of On Writing, the back page is coming off. But again, it's these Canongate editions. They're not actually the best quality, but what's inside them is what's important, and, and they are fantastic. And I do like their minimalist cover art on those editions, actually. Okay, then we have Open All Night, New Poems, and this is published by, again, by Echo. Are these, these are potentially posthumous ones. Oh, yeah, these poems written between 1917 and 1990 are part of an archive that Charles Bukowski left to be published after his death. Here we have Post Office, the classic American bestseller. Henry Chinaski is a low-life loser with a hand-to-mouth existence. His menial post office day job supports a life of beer, one-night stands and racetracks. Lurid, uncompromising and hilarious, Post Office is a landmark in American literature. It says here, this is his debut novel and has sold over a million copies in more than a dozen languages. And yeah, it's very bleak, but it is a great way to get to know him as a writer as well. So that's a good start place to start as well. Here we have Pulp, a novel. And this is very different because it doesn't follow Henry Chinaski, his alter ego. It's also one of his last books. I think he was kind of in pretty much constant pain while he wrote this one as well. But it still actually holds up very well. It's a very good novel. And it says here, so, Nicky Belaine, private detective and career alcoholic, is a troubled man. He is plagued not just by broads, booze, lack of cash and a raging ego, but also by the surreal jobs he's been hired to do. Not only does he have to track down French classical author Celine, who's meant to be dead, but he's also supposed to find the elusive Red Sparrow, which may or may not be real. And yeah, it's kind of a... A pastiche version of the like noir detective novel and it's very good then we have a, a run with the hunted a Charles Bukowski Reza edited by John Martin and basically it's just a collection of stories poems all this and all that it's probably not a great way to get into him just because it's so thick and quite dense so um, it's not necessarily as enjoyable as the others because it's, it's kind of a, a, a slog to get through it but Again, if you're a big, big fan of his like I am, then you try and collect everything, you know. So we have Septuagenarian Stew, Stories and Poems. Yeah, so it's not posthumous, but it was it was published when he was in his 70s. It was actually published three years before he died, so these are some of his later poems. Then we have Charles Bukowski, Sifting Through the Madness for the Word, The Line, The Way, New Poems. And as this is a fairly recent one that I read, you can see the tabs in it. There's probably going to be a review knocking around at some point, but it'll be in my new Archive 5 format. Because again, I've just been, I'm going to do a, a video actually of five Bukowski reviews in one because I've been reading so many of his books recently. Okay, then we have Slouching Towards Nirvana, new poems by Charles Bukowski again. Plenty of ones that are poetry collections and my po his poetry collections are actually my favourite examples of his work as well. We have Charles Bukowski, South of No North. I'm running out of space, oh dear. Then we have Tales of Ordinary Madness, so it says here. In these tales of ordinary madness, Charles Bukowski ingenuously mixes high and low culture, from prostitutes and the philosophy of Kant to despair and classical music, to create his modern dystopia. Inspired by D.H. Lawrence, John Fante and Hemingway, Bukowski's writing is passionate, extreme and relentlessly realistic. These are angry yet tender, humorous and haunting portrayals of life in the underbelly of America. We have Charles Bukowski, The Continual Condition, and this is this is also by Echo, but this is a glossy cover for some reason, which bothers me because the rest of their... It's not as beautiful as an artifact as the rest of their collections. However, what I do like is it has a blurb on the back from Leonard Cohen. So Leonard Cohen said, he brought everybody down to earth, even the angels, which I think is beautiful and also very true. 
And finally, for this video at least, we have The Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills. And this is a, another collection of poetry. And this is one of my favourite titles, actually, if not my, you know, favourite collection. It's, it's hard to pick out any individual collection as my favourite. Now, that's it for this shelf. And so, consequently, that's it for this episode of my bookshelf tours. However, in my next tour, we will be continuing with the rest of these Bukowski books. What else have we got after him? Yeah, we've got Bukowski... We've got some William S. Burroughs there as well, Johnny Cash. You'll notice we are now three shelves in and we're still on B by author surname. So figure out for yourself how long this <laughs> this series is going to gonna take. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching. As always, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you're new here and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.